With permission, Mr Speaker, I would like to make a statement on the Government's ongoing work to secure a Brexit deal that honours our commitments to the people of Northern Ireland, commands the support of Parliament and can be negotiated with the EU. On the 29th of January, this House gave me a clear mandate and sent an unequivocal message to the European Union. Last week, I took that message to Brussels. I met President Juncker, President Tusk and the President of European, the European Parliament, Antonio Tajani, and I told them clearly what Parliament wanted in order to unite behind a withdrawal agreement, namely legally binding changes to the backstop. And I explained to them the three ways in which this can be achieved. First, the backstop could be replaced with alternative arrangements to avoid a hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland. Yesterday, my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State for exiting the European Union, met with Michel Barnier to discuss the ideas put forward by the Alternative Arrangements Working Group, comprised of a number of my honourable and right honourable friends. I am grateful to that group for their work, and we are continuing to explore their ideas. Secondly, there could be a legally binding time limit to the existing backstop. Or third, there could be a legally binding unilateral exit clause to that backstop. Given both sides agree, we do not ever want to use the backstop, and that if we did it would be temporary, we believe it is reasonable to ask for legally binding changes to this effect. Mr Speaker, as expected, President Juncker maintained the EU's position that they will not reopen the withdrawal agreement. And I set out the UK's position, strengthened by the mandate that this House gave me, that this House needs to see legally binding changes to the backstop, and that can be achieved by changes to the withdrawal agreement. We both agree that our team should hold further talks to find a way forward, and he and I will meet again before the end of February to take stock of those discussions. So our work continues. The Secretary of State and the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster are today in Strasbourg, and last week the Attorney General was in Dublin to meet his Irish counterpart. And following my own visits to Brussels, Northern Ireland and Ireland last week, I welcomed the Prime Minister of Malta to Downing Street yesterday, and I will be speaking to other EU27 leaders today and throughout the week. The Right Honourable Gentleman, the Leader of the Opposition, shares the concerns of this House on the backstop. I welcome his willingness to sit down and talk to me, and I look forward to continuing our discussions. Indeed, Government Ministers will be meeting with members of his team tomorrow. I think there are a number of areas where the whole House should be able to come together. In particular, I believe we have a shared determination across this House not to allow the UK leaving the EU to mean any lowering of standards in relation to workers' rights, environmental protections or health and safety. I have met trade unions and with members from across the House, and my right hon. Friend, the Business Secretary, is leading work to ensure that we fully address all concerns about these vital issues. We have already made legally binding commitments to no regression in these areas if we were to enter the backstop, and we are prepared to consider legislating to give these commitments force in UK law. And in the interests of building support across the House, we are also prepared to commit to asking Parliament whether it wishes to follow suit whenever the EU changes its standards in these areas. And of course, we do not need to automatically follow EU standards in order to lead the way, as we have done in the past under both Conservative and Labour governments. The UK, the UK has a proud tradition of leading the way in workers' rights. The UK has a proud tradition of leading the way in workers' rights, whilst maintaining a flexible labour market that has helped deliver an employment rate almost six percentage points above the EU average. Yeah.